All right. So now we're starting unit two. And in unit two, we look at the same kind of movements that we looked at in unit one. But now instead of looking at them from uh, the point of view of how far, how fast, and all of that kind of stuff, now we look at why. Okay? We look at now the forces that are causing an object to accelerate or decelerate or move at a constant velocity okay? or things like that. So this, this unit is all focused on why do, um, why do objects do what they do. Okay? Um, so what we're going to look at here okay, is Newton's first law. Now, Newton's first law can be summed up in one word, and it is inertia. Okay. Inertia is the tendency of an object to continue doing whatever it's already doing. Okay. That's what inertia is. Okay. We often refer to it when we see something really big moving towards us. Okay. And we think, I don't want to be in front of that thing because it has a lot of inertia. Okay. In other words, I'm not going to do very much to it should it hit me, but it will do a lot to me right? because it's so much bigger. Right? So inertia is very much tied to mass. Okay? The more massive something is, the more inertia it has. Which is why in sumo wrestling, the best sumo wrestler is often the biggest sumo wrestler. That's okay? why you don't see any little skinny guys doing that. Okay? Being a little skinny guy is not a recipe for success in sumo wrestling because you don't have enough inertia. Okay? I mean, the whole point is to push the other guy out of the ring. Okay? That's what sumo wrestling is. Two really big fat guys pushing each other around okay? and trying to get the other one out of the ring. Okay? The more inertia you have, the harder it is to move you. Okay? Uh, in other words, you have a real tendency to continue doing what you are already doing. Okay? Even if that means you're just sitting there. Right? Um, another example could be if I've got a little kid sitting on a tricycle, okay, I can walk up to them and give them a little push and they'll move. Right? They don't have a lot of inertia. If I walk up to a train and do the same thing, it's not going to have the same effect. Okay? Even in like the perfect physical world where there's no friction or anything, if I push on that train, it's still not going to move very much. Okay? I mean, in the real world, it's not going to move at all. Okay? But if I you know, was in space or something where everything was weightless and there was no, there was no um, friction, okay? I wouldn't move that train very much. I would get it to move, okay? but I wouldn't move it very much. Right? It wouldn't have nearly the same effect as on the smaller mass. Okay? All right, so understand that inertia is related to the mass of an object and understand that changes in inertia require force, okay? So Newton's first law, while part of rocket science, is definitely not rocket science, okay? Here's what Newton's first law says. This desk will sit right here as long as there are no unbalanced forces acting on it. Very true. As long as I don't do anything to this desk, it's just going to sit there. Okay. Now, does that mean there are no forces acting on the desk? No. no. There are two forces acting on this desk right now. They just happen to be balanced. Okay. One of the forces is obvious. Gravity. Gravity is pulling on the desk. The force that's less obvious is what we call the normal force. It's the force of the floor pushing back up on the desk. Okay. It's part of Newton's third law. Okay? It's why you break your hand if you punch somebody in the face. Okay? You never get something for free. Okay? Um, if you exert a force on them, they exert a force back. That's the normal or reactive force. Okay? Uh, it's the same for the desk. Gravity pulls the desk against the floor. The floor has to push back with an equal amount of force in the opposite direction in order to keep the desk balanced. Okay? Keep it from moving. That sort of makes sense to everybody? Okay? So as long as forces are balanced, then objects will continue to do whatever they were doing before. So Newton's first law deals with situations where our net force, or the vector sum of all the forces, is zero. Okay? So there are no unbalanced forces in a Newton's first law situation. 
Okay. Newton's first law is also terrifying if you're an astronaut. Okay, because if you're an astronaut and you don't have any ability to exert a force and you're moving, what's going to happen to you? You'll drift in space and sleep. Yes, you'll float away, drift forever. Okay, because you have no ability to change your inertia. Okay, you will do whatever you were doing before, moving at a constant velocity in whatever direction you were already going. Okay, um, so that's why most of the time astronauts are either tethered okay, to their spacecraft or they have a maneuvering pack, okay, which is small little um, RCS uh, thrusters. They're like little jets. They release puffs of gas and allow the astronauts to move around and rotate. Okay? Moving in space is way different than moving on Earth. You wouldn't even begin to realize how much we depend on friction to move. Okay? In space, if you're in your suit and you want to turn around, you can't just go and flip around, okay? Because that would imply there was something for your hands to push against. Okay? If you try that in space, you're gonna look panicked. Okay? Because you're just gonna be flailing and it's not gonna do anything. Okay? You're just gonna sit there. Right? Um, so what you have to do is have something that can exert a force on you and push you that way. And that's those little puffs of air. Okay? You have a pressurized tank and when you let some of the pressure out, it exerts a force that can cause you to rotate okay? and allow you to turn around. Right? Without that, you know, it's pretty difficult to move around in space. Okay? That's why they do so much training. It is very difficult. All right, so force okay, is a very common word, and it means exactly what you think. It's a push or a pull. Okay? So anytime a force is being exerted, something is either being pushed or pulled by something else. Okay? Most of the forces that we're going to work with in this course are contact forces. Okay? That is, you're pushing on something directly by touching it, or you're pulling something directly by touching it, or through a rope. Okay, so you can pull something directly or pull it with a rope, or you can push something directly. Can you push something with a rope? Try it sometime. Okay. My high school physics teacher used to say that's Mr. Hill's first law of physics. You can't push on a rope. He's absolutely right. <laughs> you cannot push on a rope. Okay? I mean, you can, but you're not going to exert any force. It's just going to go slack, and then it won't do. And if you don't believe me, try it at home. Okay? That it doesn't count to roll up the rope and put it against something and then push. That's pushing directly, not through the rope. That's pushing with the rope. Okay? Then you're using the tension in the in the ice, not the rope. You're using a solid, the solid rope. Or the, the ice, sorry. Okay. Um, so anytime we have a push or a pull, okay, that's what's going on. And then we have one field force that we also use, and that's gravity. Gravity doesn't have to be. Um, doesn't require an object to be in physical contact with another in order to exert a force on it. Okay. Right, so force is a vector quantity, so it has both magnitude and direction. Okay. Does that mean we're still going to have to do vector addition in this unit? It does. Okay. That's still going to be part of this whole thing. Okay. Now, except when, now the only difference will be now when we get our, uh, our vector sum, it's the net force, okay. as opposed to the displacement or the average velocity. It, it'll be our average net force. Okay, so looking at this picture here with the uh, tow truck and the car, okay, if uh, the, the tow truck is connected to the car by a cable and the cable is pulling that direction, is the car moving in that direction? Like if the truck is towing it along the ground, is the car moving at that angle? No, okay, the car is moving horizontally, okay? So what that means is there's a vertical component to this force that is being balanced by what force? Gravity, okay? So that means the net force vertically is zero, and as a result, the object isn't moving vertically, okay? Um, if this truck is moving at a constant velocity down the highway, then that means that the force of its engine forwards is actually balanced by the force of resistance, friction, air resistance, whatever, backwards. Okay? That's why your car gets way better gas mileage on the highway than it does in town. Okay? It doesn't have to work nearly as hard to maintain a constant speed as it does to change its speed. Okay? Changing its speed requires it to exert way more force than it does just to overcome 
okay? Like the force of air resistance and things like that, okay? So maintaining a constant speed uses way less force and way less energy than to change our speed. All right, so mass, we have, this is where we have to differentiate between mass and weight. Are mass and weight the same thing? They are not, okay? Probably up until now you didn't realize that, but mass and weight are different, okay? Your mass is how much of you there is. Okay? Your weight is how hard gravity pulls on your mass. So if I want to lose weight big time, I just go to the moon. Gravity is way less there, and I will weigh one-sixth of what I weigh here. But I won't be in skin here. Okay? There'll be just as much of me there. Okay? There's just less gravity to pull on me, so I'll weigh less. Okay? Um, but obviously, if I want to, whenever, so whenever we say I want to lose weight, we really are losing weight, but it's because we're losing mass, okay, or gaining, okay, whichever way you want to go. Okay, so mass um, is basically the amount of material or the amount of matter that makes up an object. So a penny, which we don't even have anymore, okay, um, is very small mass, right? A big super tanker like this, there's a lot of mass because there's way more matter here. There's way more atoms and molecules and things like that than there would be here, all right? So would it be really easy to change the inertia of this penny? Yes, okay, to change the inertia of the super tanker? Not so much, okay, that'd be much harder. Okay, now mass is a scalar quantity, okay? We never say that we, uh, you know, our mass is 72 kilograms down, okay? Our weight is downwards, it's a force, okay, but our mass is just how much of us there is, okay? It's a scalar quantity, it does not have direction. Okay, weight is different, okay? Weight, like we said, is the force of gravity pulling on our mass. And we can actually calculate that by doing this. The force of gravity is equal to your mass times the acceleration due to gravity, okay? So you take whatever your mass is in kilograms and multiply by 9.81, right? And that will give you your weight, your weight in newtons, because your weight is a force. Okay? If somebody stands on you or sits on you, okay, you feel not their mass, but their weight. Okay? You feel the force of gravity pulling them down onto you. Okay? So you feel their, their weight. You feel okay, whatever their mass times the acceleration due to gravity is. That same person sat on you on the moon, it wouldn't be nearly as bad. All right? Everyone okay with that idea? Now, incidentally, this is something you can do now, okay? Um, you can figure out what your weight is, and the next time someone impolitely asks you for that number, because people sometimes aren't very thoughtful, okay? Yeah, how much do you weigh? That's not a polite question to ask, okay? Don't ask that, it's not polite, okay? Um, I always tell them, <laughs> I tell them, I, I weigh 760 newtons and they kind of chuckle uncomfortably and find someone else to talk to, okay? Which, which is great for me because I don't like talking to people. And, and secondly, that's a rude question, but I also didn't lie to them. I told them the truth. I told them what I weigh. And they, uh, they think I'm weird and they won't bother me or ask me how much I weigh anymore because that's not polite, okay? So you can do that and then they'll leave you alone, okay? So it's a good way to get out of it. They'll never, most people, 90% of people will never be able to figure out how many kilograms or pounds it is, okay? So. All right. Um, so, to understand Newton's first law, okay, there's a cu couple of kind of common, common situations that we could look at, okay? If we were looking at like hockey or curling, okay, where we've got an object that can slide along an essentially frictionless surface, okay? If that surface is truly frictionless, the object will continue to travel at a constant velocity forever, okay? As long as they don't run out of ice. Okay? It'll continue to travel at that constant velocity because there's no forces that are out of balance that can slow it down. Okay? Um, now, if the puck is just sitting on the ice, same situation. All the forces acting on the puck are balanced. Okay? If I hit the puck with a stick, then what happens? It not only moves it, what kind of movement? It accelerates, right? It goes from rest to some other velocity as long as the stick is pushing it, right? So 
the acceleration or the change in inertia occurs as long as the force is out of balance. And as soon as the stick hits the puck, and as long as it's in contact with the puck and pushing on it, okay, it's exerting an unbalanced force causing the puck to accelerate. As soon as the puck leaves the stick, now what? It's going to move at a constant velocity. In the real world, you're right, it'll start decelerating because of friction. Okay? But in the perfect physical world, that puck will now travel at a constant velocity because the force that was previously accelerating it, that was not balanced, is now gone. Okay? Right? And this is kind of, that's how curling works. Okay? So if you've ever watched paint drying, I mean curling, okay? you, um, you've probably seen how that works. Right? They get the, the rock sliding along the ice, okay? and then they do all kinds of things to try and um, extend how far it can travel or change the direction in which it travels. Okay? And they do that by simply changing the amount of friction and the location of that frictional force okay, in order to um, kind of manipulate how the rock slides along the ice. Okay? Um, so there's different turns. If you rotate the rock one direction or the other, it turns in a different direction. That has to do with where the friction acts on it the most. And if you sweep it properly, you can also cause it to turn. If you sweep more on one side of it, there's less friction on one side than the other, and it'll turn and slow down in the direction where there's more friction. So you can actually change the direction of the rock by sweeping it on one side or the other. Okay? These are all things that expert curlers would be able to do. Okay? All right. Everybody okay with that? Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of videos of Newton's first law in action now. What's that? No, I would not do that to you. I'm not going to make you watch curling, paint drying, grass growing. No.